From the time the hype train departed the station, the developers of Doom Eternal made it clear that weapon mods were an essential part of the game because of how limited ammo is. You can't just rely on a single weapon anymore, like you could with the pistol in Doom 2016. But what if you wanted to keep your weapons as basic as possible? Can you beat Doom Eternal without upgrading any weapons? This is your final warning, your last chance to get the Mitten Squad Christmas sweater sweatshirt before it goes back into the Disney vault forever. By the time you see this, you'll have fewer than 5 days left to place your order. If enough of you buy it, maybe I could finally fulfill my childhood dream of making my voice even more nasally. That would really be the greatest Christmas present of all time. Upon starting Doom Eternal, you'll be faced with the first and only choice you'll have to make throughout this entire nightmare, whether to play on baby mode or super baby mode. I, being the weakling that I am, chose to play on ultra baby mode. The helmet in the picture is close to the one I wear. The brief intro cinematic panned in from f***ing space, Doom Guy retrieved his little pea shooter that isn't a pistol, and the game begins. Right out the gate, it's revealed that our goal is to kill three hell priests to stop the invasion of Earth. Fun fact. At this point, I was thinking this would be a combat shotgun only playthrough, which was why I restarted the mission after the first glory kill. I also noticed something about the game that felt off, like floaty or vague and loose like a good steering wheel. The chained saw joined the party in style by forcing itself to be used, thus ending the combat shotgun only playthrough and birthing the no weapon upgrades challenge. Not even 12 minutes in and Todd Howard required me to abuse the little robot friend and acquire a weapon mod. The good news is that from what I know about them, which isn't much since I never used them, the first mods you get for any weapon will give it some unique ability or feature instead of just buffing it. For the purposes of this challenge, it's beneficial that you can obtain the weapon mods and choose not to use them. Sometime later I would learn that you can completely unequip the mods in the menu to completely remove the possibility that you'll accidentally use them. Then I squeezed the head off a king, got a glimpse at a wedding, and saw the most absolute unit anyone had ever laid their eyes on. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this year's Animal Crossing, when I wrote that that was still relevant, here's how it works. You run through an area, clear out an area full of demons, do some platforming, rinse for 20 seconds, and repeat. And because for once in my life I can actually use multiple weapons in a Doom game, the first level wasn't terrible. I started noticing rather early that meleeing the pathetic weaklings didn't automatically stagger them like it did last year, also that I suck at platforming. The robo-spider revealed itself just in time to die. The game showed me that one of the combat shotgun's mods is useful for taking out the spider. If you've played Doom Eternal, you know firsthand how annoying that spider is to kill with a plain old shotgun. Actually, you probably don't. Nobody else but me is stupid enough to unequip the shotgun upgrades the game force feeds you. Good news is, the heavy cannon was left behind by a careless child, presenting me with a great new tool for the annihilation of Hell's forces. The wall climb was introduced for more parkouring fun. I'll spoil the surprise and tell you that the platforming sections were easily my least favorite part of this game, besides there not being a pistol you start off with. Because there is actually a pistol in the game, but it doesn't have infinite ammo like the one in Doom 2016. This arena felt like it was the hardest one yet, and it might have been because it was, or because I was still getting reaccustomed to playing a game like Doom, where you're constantly moving and shooting and shooting and moving and jumping and shooting and even moving again. It's a mentally exhausting game, not Meow Motors level of exhausting, but it presents a fair challenge even on the easiest difficulty. Deeper into the ruins, my old nemesis, the idiot bubble, entered my life. I knew when it arrived, not even 30 minutes into the game, that this would not be a pleasant experience. But all hope is not lost. You're supposed to use the grenade launcher on whatever gun has it to launch an explosive into the mouth of the bubble. But you can do that with regular grenades too. Sure, you only have one shot because grenades take time to recharge. But it's an option, and that's good enough for me. Hell on Earth took on a new meaning when Hell actually arrived on Earth. It was around this time I got the ability to fast travel. I never used that once. After entering a teleporter, I entered a citadel, fought my way to the top of it in search of the priest to deliver a message. They ran away. The didact from Halo 4 showed up to refer to itself in third person. I got the flame belch from the big ship in the sky and was forced to obtain a sentinel crystal. This upgrades your health, armor, or ammo capacity and also offers a secondary buff if both upgrades are taken. At first, I tried to avoid these whenever possible. I didn't want any upgrades of any kind, but later in the game I decided that the challenge wouldn't be failed if I used them. 
Ammo is scarce enough as it is, and without any weapon upgrades, I'd need as much ammo as I could possibly get my hands on. As always, if you consider that a failure, feel free to dislike the video. From there, I traveled to Exultia, a land where Titans fell. It's a real graveyard here. They were as dead on my arrival as Titanfall 2 was on its arrival. Grimace's cousin, the big purple bully, rudely broke down one of the doors. It paid for it with its life. I punched a ghost dog, then the blood brunch, a powerful melee attack that eviscerates everything in its path that's weak enough to die from it. I could have used one of the runes, I wanted to, but the advantage they offered seemed like a bit much, so I ignored them. More shooting, more platforming, more low ammo indicators, more fire, more doom eternal. I don't think I need to say that every demon fight was more difficult than the last. That was usually the case. Unless I say otherwise, just assume that the battles get progressively harder as you get more weapons. That's, you know, the way games work. I obtained the dash maneuver, picked up the rarest marble in the universe, spoke to the Ghost King, came rather close to dying in this area, got more annoyed at my inability to understand how to do basic platforming than I should've, found a battery, and teleported right to the plasma rifle, which the Revenant was using as a top, as a top, what? Which the Revenant, which the Revenant was using as a top to lure me to hell. A top? Like a, like a spinning top? That's really lame. I'm pretty sure I'm in hell, though I didn't see my fourth grade teacher here. Disappointing. Well, maybe one of the demons I killed was one of her babies that I lost. That's a fun thing to think about. Brings a smile to my face every time. It took me a minute to figure out where to go from the giant hand in the ground. The purple goo stuck to my boots, destroyed a few Squidwards, got another weapon mod, then disabled it. I was hoping I'd get a trophy if I got enough of them. Powered the hand, this made me feel nothing. Platforms and wall jumps, the mother of all demons and an arena that damn near cost me my life to round out this level. Round, meaning these rounded things I climbed on, not the level even though that's what I said. This level set piece was ripped open by a special holographic toothpick. The darkness of Grandma Sparkle managed to reach me all the way in hell. I can't even begin to wrap my head around what might have happened here. I had to kill myself to get the use of my eyeballs again. From there I got the Slayer key to a gate I wasn't interested in, and found the Betrayer. Seeing a Gears of War all the way down there with his giant wife sitting in the lava is supposed to be cool, I guess, but being able to phase where I threw him killed it for me. I parkoured through some flaming barbed wire, platformed up on and around the platforms, got into a combat scenario in relatively close quarters that ended when a bubble pushed me off into the lava like a jackass. The level ended. I returned to the Fortress of Doom with my special lantern. Jarvis let me know that the second Hell Priest was on Earth. I got the Ice Bomb, which is its own weapon, not an upgrade so I can use it. I took the elevator past my dad and entered the demon prison to take part in a parole hearing. Nobody convinced me that they deserved it, so I left to travel to a cultist base. This is the ice world. There are Pidgeys and Wingles all over the place, as well as a few walls with space heaters built into them and the occasional explosive confetti question mark. The Mancubus was introduced here too. They're as grotesque as they are adorable. I had to seek refuge from the man bust twins flame attack for a brief moment. Don't remember if that's happened before. Me being bad at video games is something you don't see every day. I see it, but you don't. I saw Nemo floating down there by the water just before I got lost. It wasn't as bad as when I got lost when I was nine though. The f***ing maniac's door I knocked on, they didn't have any tissues. They gave me toilet paper. I'm honestly surprised I didn't get abducted and cooked alive. Anyway, I got the rocket launcher, which was fun. I couldn't use it in Doom 2016, so it was definitely a breath of fresh air in my all but collapsed liver. It wasn't too long before I found myself in the hologram room. These guys were all worshipping the light. So logically, I tested their faith. They all failed. With the blue hell orb stuffed somewhere safe, New Vegas told me my old super shotgun was somewhere nearby. Another useful tool in my reign of destruction. I attempted one of the secret encounters just to say I tried it. It didn't go very well. The Kool-Aid all over the floor got stuck to my boots, which threw me off my game. To round out this mission, I had a f***ing nightmare of a time getting through this swing puzzle. It wasn't necessarily hard. It took me like 5 minutes, but that was about 6 minutes longer than it should have taken. The problem was, I'm stupid. I couldn't figure out what to do. Eventually, I got it, got my consciousness transferred into Herald to take control of a revenant to clear the room. The super shotgun is a little shy and doesn't like large crowds. From there, it was off to the tentacle chamber for my punishment time. It's been about four months since I touched this script, and I have no idea what a tentacle chamber is. 
Maybe it was playing on this giant demonic corpse like it's a jungle gym. Regardless, the hologram ran away. I killed a revenant and some other guys. A fun time. Having access to all the weapons just without their upgrades is annoying, but not as bad as you'd think. Outside of the cultist base, I rode the armored Thomas into another location. The Doom Hunter base, if the name of this mission is to be believed. After seeing the light and being birthed into a new world, I did some parkouring and got another upgrade that I wasn't going to use. Pinkies are introduced here. They're adorable in the same way my dead dog's ashes are adorable. The biggest hindrance when it comes to not having any weapon upgrades is that a lot of them are there to make it easier to hit a specific part of an enemy's weak point. You get a bunch of upgrades and are constantly switching weapons to do the most damage possible against any given demon. Weapons are still solid enough on their own. They do decent amounts of damage. But like the pistol only video, it makes every aspect of the game more difficult and time consuming. I saw the world's deadliest tic-tac-toe board a little ways into the mission. I took another sentinel crystal upgrade because they're not weapon upgrades in the traditional sense. Maybe you see that as a failure. Maybe I see you as a failure. Maybe we agree to disagree. At long last, we find ourselves at the first boss fight. A hunter of some sort. Difficult is not a word I would use to describe this fight. It only took about 4 minutes to beat him, which really ain't sh**. I say that because immediately after killing one, you've gotta kill two more at the same time. The variety of the friendly murder toys make this challenge not terrible. Ammo is scarce, but still kinda widely available. Restricting yourself to a single weapon, regardless of how good it is, would be significantly harder than not using any weapon upgrades. There really is no take it slow option for Doom, you just gotta be careful and pay attention to what you're doing. We got a beautiful cross section of this guy's neck, left him a quarter for his troubles, the blood punch got an upgrade that was forced so it doesn't count. The con maker forgot to bring the fog machine to match the strobe light they installed all over my ship and we began the task of tracking down the last heck priest. The location, Hell, aka Europe. I snagged myself the ballista, another new weapon, and sent myself down to the super gore nest. The atmosphere is something I could really get behind. Very festive. It feels the way a 2020 Christmas should. Literally, Hell on Earth. It was so filled with blood and pink shit all over the walls, that I almost thought I'd fulfilled one of my childhood dreams of being eaten alive by Majin Buu. The big sword guy died not long after I entered the Mall of America. They're new here, I think. They're very generic despite the lightsabers taped to their forearms. They're just kinda there. Like that kid from everyone's first grade class who was nobody's best friend, but was always kinda involved in everything. Tentacle Land was where I found myself before too much time had passed. The forces of hell really did a number on Moo Moo Meadows. There's lava and holographic screen doors and death and despair as far as the eye can see. I don't remember much from this playthrough because today is December 22nd, and I played through this almost exactly 9 months ago. But I do vaguely remember this flying Dutchman room making me feel really smart. My weapon wheel was almost a complete family again after I obtained the chain gun. Got it just in time to find the super gore nest. This is where demon babies come from. It got real wiggly when I shifted it into maximum overdrive. The gyrations were not enough to satisfy me. I needed more grain. It was located far away in an office building. Like nuclear missile launching keys requiring two people, they put the two power switches far away from each other so that they could only be activated by Meltman, and they knew Meltman would never betray us. Finally ready for the end, I let the heart have a massive f***ing coronary. Squidward's arms tried to stop me from escaping the meltdown, but he failed, and I returned to Mother Base. Our goal has gone from grandiose to flat out head on for the PSP in a matter of seconds. First we're rescuing a bunny, now we're tracking down a final hell priest to stop a demonic infestation. I like to think that my 4th grade teacher's mother's quack doctor broke the news of her vile spawn appearing in her wretched womb by telling her that she had a demonic infestation. Despite the less than friendly interaction with Dr. Hayden at the end of Doom 2016, the computer man believes Hayden can help us with the priest. Next stop. The building whose loading screen vaguely reminded me of Zerg when I looked at it just now. Fight your way up the Pokemon Battle Tower until you reach the Make-A-Wish kid who wanted to be at the top but wasn't good enough, so little Johnny got to be on top of the world for a minute and he's already dead. The Cyberman came as wheeled on by and said howdy for the first time in this mission. See, I released this after the Cyberpunk video for a reason. This section here tossed my brain through the dryer. It took me 10 minutes to get through here, which was weird because as I demonstrated in my Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland video, I'm actually very good at platforming. Getting to Hayden was more complicated than anticipated. It would appear as though Gordon quit of the Highland Quid Clan was not successful in defeating the Kraken. It's like my great uncle used to say, if you're gonna get a cat, you might as well get a gun too. 
I shot some guys next. Not sure how much of the combat I've mentioned so far. I would go so far as to call the combat very good. It's got a little something for everyone. 6 out of 10. Still not at Hayden's house. It's been over an hour now. A few scientists tried to stop me with their words. I grabbed the skeleton key that reminded me vaguely of Wedgelore from Mr. Meaty. And the bumble f marauder showed up to the party. First time through, this pissed me off. I'll be honest, I don't remember much of what my strategy was, probably didn't have much of one yet. Having done no research, I'm gonna go ahead and state as a fact that this fight is much easier if you've unlocked certain weapon mods. I don't know why, I just got a feeling. That being said, this proves how easy this baby game is. Even with nerf guns, the toughest enemy in the entire game can't kill me. Hayden got resurrected, we got him on a 1.5 on the Jesus waiting scale, and we're going to Mars. There's no easy way into Mars. Might have just gotten a new weapon, can't be sure. The point of this mission is to be an intervention. Doom guy's got a gun problem that's getting out of hand. Now he wants to be fired out of a BFG 10,000. Welcome to the party, Pain Elemental. Here's how you can think of Pain Elementals. If Doug Funny was a cacodemon, the Pain Elemental is Mr. Dink after Doug broke his grill. There were demons inside the BFG itself, which was odd, real odd, but we'll come back to that because I finally obtained the BFG 9000, which was real great seeing as I couldn't use it in my last Doom video. Also, just spitballing ideas here, Doom 2016 pistol only without taking damage. That could be fun. Next stop, Mars. That's right class, we made it to Mars. You might be wondering if we skipped over a lot of the fighting, and the answer is no. If the drugs did their job, the answer is no. I got to fight one of the coolest demons in the entire game here. Our trip to Mars was a sham. We spent more time getting there than we did on Mars itself, possibly because the last game was set on Mars. Sentinel Prime was the big one, the mission that introduces story to Doom for the first time, and other characters too. A history lesson is what it really is. Shortly after opening my 15 year old jar of cheese, all hell broke loose and we fight Bad Maw. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that because I didn't remember the Gladiator was a boss fight in this game, that he wasn't too tough. The shield was the true boss though. That was the twist. He broke out the hammer and sickle in round 2, didn't make much of a difference. His final demise reminded me of the fire extinguisher scene. The last holy ratatouille priest died. Blood Punch was upgraded against my will, and something weird happened. The con maker's final plan to stop me from intruding on her mission was to cut off power from the ship. The next plot point is overly convoluted for a video like this. The con maker wants to consume the earth because I killed three of her little bears, but of course by consume she means she wants to wake up the icon of sin that's beneath the surface of the earth. This is complete nonsense. Let's just make this easier. You can all be my baby birds and I'll regurgitate my knowledge into your head. That knowledge was of course regurgitated into my mind by the internet. And I quote, The icon's presence warps reality, damaging the intricate order of our dimension merely by existing within it. If the icon is allowed to remain unchecked, it would lead to the total devastation of Earth, followed by a lockdown of space-time around the planet. The resulting black hole will eventually drag our entire universe down, casting it into the mouth of hell as a conquest to be absorbed by the Dark Realm. That's some heavy sh**. That's the Icon of Sin. As I've said, nonsense. Apparently what happened to the Master Chief in Halo 4 when he got his library card from Arthur the Aardvark, where he got the ability to resist being composed, that's what happened here. They're swimming too. Always fun to swim. The big ass titan will only remain dead as long as the toothpick is in his eye. That's good game design. Another marauder wasn't happy that I'd woken up his dad, but accidents happen, you know? Sometimes you're in first grade at your private Christian school, and you write swear words on a pole on the playground, and you wait until your friends point it out to you, so you can all feel like heroes when you go tell the teacher what you found, with none of them knowing that you were the one who wrote them in the first place. Sometimes things like these just happen and they can't be avoided. The Crucible Blade required Granddad's lucky quarter to function, as well as being dunked in the infinite lava pool. The Crucible is the magic weapon like divorce papers, capable of tearing whatever it comes across in two. It's a neat weapon, but not something I found myself using very often because there aren't very many enemies in the game that are so difficult that they necessitate an insta-kill weapon. It's the kind of weapon you'll save for later and never use. But now we've got the Crucible, which means it's time to enter the City of the Damned. 
this place is but a pit stop on our journey towards the con maker herself. But what a beautiful stop it is. I've always wanted to see those big ass demons in the tower level of Diablo 3 up close. I feel like the lava or the blood pouring from this demon's eye sockets is a good step towards that goal. And just when the torment and misery couldn't get any better, it did. I'm getting a first hand look at the soul extraction process. That's another cyberpunk reference. And everything about this game is so f***ing metal. The eyeless yet all-seeing judgmental brain determines who's lucky enough to have their soul extracted through endless torture, and those who aren't good enough go to the blood swamps. The con maker uses the souls to fuel her world. I've been saying it for years now, the future of energy is not solar, it's blood. The popular kid's birthday party mission is a two-parter. There's only so much suffering you can fit in one mission. If you've played the Mater missions in the Cars game for the original Xbox, you know what I mean. The hunt for the con maker is as real as the game is beginning. There you go, I said it. Shut up already. The bridge to the temple reminded me of getting knocked off a bridge by a communist in Doom 2016. Missing a simple wall grab reminded me of how awful I am at pretty much everything. All the tortured souls reminded me of everyday life. The shock liquid reminded me of playing with my lucky toaster in the bathtub as a kid. This entire mission is just a nice long trip down memory lane. After the voice in my head implied I'm a divorce lawyer, I continued to scale the tower. Two titans are holding up the tower with two chains. With it plummeting violently towards the surface of wherever we are, I jumped into the portal and entered Erdak, homeworld of the conmaker. Maybe it's just me, but with names like Erdak and a world based around grey set pieces with orange lights and levitating platforms, it's hard for me to not get a big Halo 4 vibe from this game. The platforming parts are fun, if you're the kind of person who has fun with platforming in a first person shooter. I used an energy blade to stop the baby icon Sinhart. He woke up, didn't pay a mind to little old me, took the quickest route to Earth, and the Maker Drones are introduced as an enemy. You'll benefit greatly from not being a complete f***ing jackass, and actually using the weapon mods the game gives you. The drone's weak point is the head. They can be dispatched of in no time if you've got a precision single strike weapon. I don't. The Ballista is really all I've got, and if you've played Black Ops 2, you know how terrible that thing is. Even at this relatively late stage in the game, it's still perfectly playable without using any weapon mods. This is probably the 8th time I've implied this. It's like the pistol run all over again. Everything can be killed easily enough if you know what you're doing, which is convenient because Doom Eternal isn't really the kind of game you can get very far in without having a solid grasp on how all the weapons work and movement and whatnot. To return to Earth, three rings had to be aligned by, of course, visiting three different platforms full of enemies within this section of this mission. Despite nearing death more frequently than I did in any other part of the game, I never died. All three rings were aligned just before Heimdall could send me over the rainbow bridge to be with my dead dog. A boss fight broke out, and this one with the ur didact herself, the con maker. This was horrendous. First, I had almost no ammo to start with, and getting more would require doing the entire mission over again. Or so I thought. I had a few rockets, one big fucking bullet, and shotgun ammo. I did manage to do some good damage against her with my shotgun just before dying. It was only in round 2, I learned about using the hook thing on my super shotgun to get up close for big pain. See, I said that then I kept using everything but that. This is a great example of me being too stupid for my own good. Not long after taking out one sliver of her life, I began using the ballista to quickscope punk ass little bitches on high rise. From there, with knowledge of how to take her downtown and use the souls of those who fell before me as projectiles from my weapons, it was only a matter of time before I ended the con maker. The implications of her death are quite heavy. All of creation is now damned and the didact pulled a gavin by accidentally using kamikaze on the sky instead of the doom slayer but we did it we're home i was gonna make a joke about this mission taking place on that one building from super mario odyssey but i couldn't remember the name of it i'm leaving this in because it would have been a good reference this is a fun level i've always wanted to play in the destroyed ruins of bikini bottom after wormy rampaged all over town the fights are tense because it's the end of the game the toughest demons are sent after you in large numbers and in open yet small areas. It was intense enough that I died more than once. It's like a puzzle you can put together however you want, because you just experienced something so ungodly traumatizing that this is your brain putting you in a happy place where you always grab the right puzzle piece and everything is lovely. But you need to wake up now. Then we arrive at the Icon of Sin. First time through, it was great. Really, just tremendous. He didn't fucking show up. 
After reloading a checkpoint, he got his cue from the director and began his preordained destruction. You've gotta blast off all his armor pieces to expose his body that's been chiseled out of stone by a man of god. It's time consuming, but there are so many enemies around you with power-ups to replenish ammo generating weapons that as long as you're constantly moving and shooting, you're not gonna have too difficult of a time. The second phase of the fight is the same thing just in a smaller area with less cover. With all his flesh ripped off, I plunged the sword into the Great Titan's brain. His mind was teleported into a dimension of everlasting pain as his body lie comatose. And I, on a technical level, did not beat Doom Eternal without upgrading any weapons. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.